Hello, Tom Bird here at Drake once again. Welcome to the Fly Fish Store YouTube channel. Um, in the next sort of month, four weeks, we're going to be doing something a little bit different to what we've done before. So obviously, hopefully you've seen the videos on the bung, straight lining, fishing eye book in the hot weather. Um, over the next coming weeks, we're going to be doing a little segment on flies. Um, so I'm going to be tying some flies today. Showing you some of the patterns that are going to work at Draker, iBook, Thornton in the coming weeks um, and how I would tie them. The products we're going to be using are available from the iBook Lodge and also on the online shop. If you want any more hints and tips on fly tying or have got any questions feel free to ask or comment below. Um, so let's get into it but before we do don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you've got any feedback on the videos coming out, please let us know. We want to make sure that we keep improving and giving the viewers what they want. So, another popular fly we're going to look at um, and then show you how to tie is the muskins. So, in the vice, this is a muskins, this is the natural brown one. Um, the popular on Draker, iBook, Thornton. I think it's just something a little bit different. You know, a lot of people use dowelbacks, crunchers. Um, when the fish have seen a lot of them, these flies really do come into their own. Great on a washing line. Um, there's so many different variants you can use. I mean, this is the standard one. There's a black one with a red hot spot, UV hot spot. The possibilities are, are endless with them, really. Um, so, like I say, this is the fully mill one. It's a good pattern, catching a lot of fish. Um, I'm going to show you how to tie our own now, it's quite simple, pretty basic materials, so we'll pop that one down. Um, so the hooks we're going to be using are the Fario Wet Fly, size 12, again, but B175 without the barb. Uh, so I'll get that out of my tub. Pop it in the vise. So the thread I've gone for, as I say, this is a slight variant of that one. Um, this is the Semperfly 12 uh, wax thread in red. So to start with, we're going to run a layer of thread on, trim away the excess, and then just touch and turns all the way down to where the barb would be. There we go. So, again, brown, red game, feather, and all we're looking to do is just to pull the fibres off to the side like that, grab yourself a pinch, pull them away. Hopefully then, all the tips will be lined up like that. What we're looking for, tail about the length of the body, off it up to the hook. Loose thread wrap over the top, making sure that they're in on the middle, they are, two wraps and they're tied in, so just trim away that excess there, so for the rib it's going to be copper wire, just catch that on with one pinch there, the copper wire we're using is the extra small copper wire from UTC, and then in with a nice pheasant tail. Um, so for the body, we're going to use about three fibres. These are nice long ones, so just get me three fibres like that. Pull them away. That's four there. Doesn't really matter. But three, three fibres there, and then just break them away from the stem. Make sure the tips are lined up. I like to just always trim the thinnest bit of the tip away, and then offer those up. There, work my way down, catching them in, working my way up. So, this is sort of a body and then a thorax fly. So, you want to stop roughly, sort of, you want to leave yourself maybe three, four mil to get the thorax in. Um, so, now what we'll do is we'll go in with the pheasant tail, touch and turns. Nice and tight, all the way up to about there. Cross it over the thread. Two, 
three. Trim away the excess. Come in now with the copper wire towards me. We'll get four on here, nice sort of tightish turns just to protect that pheasant tail. Over the top with one, and then one, two, three, and then one more little tight turn. Just hold the thread tight and just break away the wire, it breaks off really easily. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put on the wing case. So on this it's got a wing case of natural pheasant tail. So again, we want sort of a nice bunch, maybe eight fibres. So again, eight fibres there, roughly. Pull them off, break them off. Marry the tips up. Just trim the tips there and then just catch them in on the top, run them back down to where the body ends. So as I said, this is going to be a slight variant. So I'm going to put a little holographic hotspot. So this is just red holographic um, in medium. So I shall find the end. There it is. Pull myself a length off. Trim it off. So, just catch that in. And then all we're looking to do is just one full thread wrap, full wrap of the tinsel. Just gives that little hot spot there. Catch it off. Trim away the excess. Now for the um, for the fly, it does have a sort of hair's ear thorax. Um, however, I quite like to use um, a little bit of fox squirrel. So this is the Wopsy Natural Fur. Um, this is, as it says on the back, the fox squirrel one. A little bit more spiky, a bit more leggy. A little bit more buggy in my opinion so that's what I'm going to use for this normally I put a little bit of wax on because the squirrel doesn't like to come on but this threads already waxed so I don't need to so all we're gonna do is just go into the packet get myself a little pinch out so like I say literally a little pinch run it off just build myself a bit of a dubbing rope there and then tighten up and we just want to dub dub it on, it will come out a bit but that's fine any stray fibres just kind of stroke them back a little bit get them out of the way and there we go, go up towards the eye a couple of thread wraps as you can see there we've got that nice sort of spiky effect so um, the original was tied with Antron for the breathers on the um, muskins. However, I'm going to use white um, UTC floss. Um, another variant is you can use you can use um, black UTC. You can use uh, sorry orange floss. So. This is the one I'm going to use. As I said, you can use different ones, different glow brights, variants. Use glow bright five, glow bright four, give a bit more of a hot spot. But this is the one I'm going to use. It's a glow bright sixteen. Gives some nice thin breathers. The original was tied with Antron, um, which is what the fully mill one is tied with. But again, I, I like a slim pattern. So all we're doing, trim away a length, and then we're going to double it over and double it over again, and that gives four strands. So then all we're going to do is just offer it onto the thread, pull it over like that, uh, thread wrap, and then we'll go round in a figure of eight, pull it back, one more there, and then that will give the breathers that we'll trim in a minute. So then after next step, pull the pheasant tails over, pull them down towards the eye, 
one thread wrap, two, three, then I like to go back, fold them back over, and work your way back up, and then that'll give a nice taper to the head. Just hold the thread, because it does have a tendency to want to slip once you do that. Trim away the excess. Save those for another muskins. Pull off the thread and then just come in and then we'll whip finish over these ends like that. Away and there we are. Trim away the excess and then what we're going to do with these breathers is trim them. So you want them about the length of the thorax so just pull them down Give them a trim, same with this side, give them a trim. And then there we have a very leggy looking muskins. Um, so final step is just to add a little bit again, Benyard's varnish, the clear cell on to the head of the fly just to protect it. And there we have it. So that is a nice muskins variant. You can see you've got the breather, got the red just shining through. Really nice pattern for the coming months.